We're on location today with Nora Gon, design director from Barocco. Welcome, Nora. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm such a big fan of yours, and one of the things that you do that really intrigues me is that you know you build these beautiful garments that have these really interesting, unexpected underlying structures to them. So, I, you know. It, it really seems like you explore a lot of different possibilities and that you really have a, a sense of, of math and geometry going into um, uh, when you approach how to make a sweater. Well, I get really excited by things when, when I think it's a new idea, like putting shapes together that actually make a sweater that I didn't know would make a sweater until I tried it. Well, it's really unexpected, and, you know, it's sort of very fresh feeling. So, I mean, like this sweater over here, um, it, this is one of my favorites. It's composed of hexagons put yep, together. Yep, completely right? of hexagons or or a hexagon split down the center, sometimes mm -hmm. a piece missing, but all, all hexagons, which means it's all triangles. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I, what I really love about it is the way that, you know, the way that you've got different shapes that fit different parts of the body um, and, and, you know, go together to make, uh, to make a, a useful functional form. You know, it's right. really intriguing. So the, the yarn that you're, that you're using for this is exhibit, you know, it, it's got these subtle color changes to it. Yep. Um, and what kind of what kind of fiber is that? It's a merino wool, very soft um, mm -hmm. merino wool that has the roving is dyed first, and then they spin it up. So that's how you get a really subtle color change, like you're saying. Well, so I mean, so the you know the, the garments that you make are so much about the knitting and the stitches themselves and the direction that they're moving in and that kind of thing. Right. You know, so that you know yarn with a color change like that is really right. perfect. Right. Well, a color change yarn is perfect for this kind of thing because you really see the shape of the hexagon. Right. Because it's going around, you know, each side of it. So another example of your sense of geometry when it comes mm -hmm. to knitting um, is this purple sweater. Can you tell us a little bit about the famous tilted dust? <laughs> This one, um, the important part, I think, is the, the skirt of it. it. The top of it is knit at a tilt, so the shape of the bodice is normal, like th the same as a normal sweater, only it was, um, it was knit as this being the straight. And then the skirts worked down, and there's a lot of shaping to make it triangular there at the bottom. And there's a really wonderful like architectural kind of quality to it and how all the different pieces go together. And then finally, the, the one on the end here, I, I love this. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really different, so. This is one of those things, I, I think I woke up in the middle of the night with this epiphany that if I put these shapes together, these spool-like shapes, like you see, quilting that maybe it would make a sweater like maybe the holes would be the right size for the neckline and the the armholes and it worked so I was really excited by that and I also like the fact that um, you don't have to sew all those pieces together you knit them on to each other it's great so here we have something that really is a, a mathematic an expression of a mathematical form and this is called a dodecahedron is that right that's right and it's a <laughs> Stellated dodecahedron. It's stellated right? dodecahedron. Because so a normal one is um, 12 of these pentagons put together making a roundish form or a dodecahedron. But when it's pulled out like this into space, it's a stellated. Great. So, how do you actually knit these pieces? So, to do this, um, First you cast on the number of stitches that you need for five sides, and then you divide them onto needles, you just slide them mm -hmm. onto these needles. Because each conical piece is knitted in the round, right? Right. So you, the first one you start out, you, you have to start out, you're like at the base here, mm -hmm. at the biggest point, you cast on all those stitches, and you divide it onto however many needles, usually three, so you have two sides and then two sides and one mm -hmm. side. You join it into a circle, like this one has been joined already, and you end up working a certain number of rows straight. So right. in this case, it was three. Now, if you work the three rows straight, then you um, you end up decreasing, which forms the cone right. shape. So you decrease there, and then knit straight across until you get to the marker, and you make another decrease. Right. So you're doing this all the way around, same thing, all the way around, three rows straight, do that again, three rows straight, over and over. So then, after you've got one done, you knit the next one onto it. So you've cast on some stitches, mm -hmm. and then picked up some, cast on again, and you make this other cone like this. So this whole form is really made without, without seaming. You, you're picking up the stitches seaming. as you go, that's great. So eventually, you've got the whole thing almost closed up. Let's, we'll pretend this is the last one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, when you're close to the end, you put all the stuffing in just to you know, polyester stuffing like you'd have in a pillow. 
and, um, and you start closing it up by more and more decreases and you know, last little bit of stuffing at the end and you take a tapestry needle and put that through the loops, pull it up and you're done. Well, and in all different kinds of yarns, you know, it could be a great toy, it could be a great thing to just, a great accessory just to have around the house. It's yep. really a fun we thing. We made a bunch of versions. It's the sock yarn one, and then uh, we had someone crochet one, too. Okay. And that one has a little bell in it, which is kind of fun. Oh, great. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Nora. That was my pleasure. Knitting daily. Make time for yarn every day. The projects and patterns from today's show Plus more ideas and projects can be found on the web at knittingdailytv.com. This is show 204. Continue knitting daily every day by joining the online Knitting Daily community and receive a free newsletter five times a week filled with step-by-step -step techniques, inspiring reader-contributed stories, and free patterns. It's about knitting all the time. Knittingdaily.com. Knitting Daily has been sponsored in part by Interweave, inspiring, encouraging, and supporting creative self-expression through art and craft media. Interweave.com Yarnmarket.com, a global resource for over 600 yarns plus books, patterns, and other knitting supplies. Yarnmarket.com Fiesta Yarns and Ironstone Yarns. We are color. FiestaYarns.com IronstoneOnline.com Webs, America's Yarn Store, a source for knitting and crocheting yarns and supplies. Yarn.com. Taki Stacy Charles, Feel the Desire, Knit Your Passion. TNNA, the National Needle Arts Association, the organization for independent needle arts retailers. Signature Needle Arts, heirloom tools for your knitting projects. Blue Sky Alpacas, Redefining High Fiber.